Hey gang, I hope you all are doing well. Uh, this is just a kind of quick and dirty video on using Tabletop Simulator to play Ardent Reapers. Uh, I know there are going to be some folks coming to the game who haven't played uh, on Tabletop Simulator before or don't have a whole lot of experience. So hopefully this will just be a, a helpful kind of primer on how to play and some tips and tricks uh, specific to playing Ardent Reapers. Um, so you will, of course, need a Steam and Tabletop Simulator purchased and installed. Uh, once you've done that, uh, you can go to your library, select Tabletop Simulator, uh, and you'll need to go to the workshop. And from there, uh, you can search the workshop for Ardent Reapers. I'll also throw a link to the mod in the video description. And this is the one right here by the legend himself, Sky Jedi. Uh, you can select that, and for me, it's already subscribed, but you'll have the option to subscribe to the mod. Um, and there will be a very brief download uh, while the mod is, is downloaded to your system. Um, once you've done that, though, uh, you can actually launch Tabletop Simulator. Um, and, you know, just, of course, be, be aware that there will be a, just a brain-curdling uh, noise at the beginning of opening Tabletop Simulator, which I think you can disable, um, but I haven't done so yet. Uh, anyways, you'll go ahead and create a lobby, presumably multiplayer. Uh, there are, of course, options. Uh, if you're trying to play with people randomly or, or trying to play with people on Discord, uh, probably your best bet is um, to just create a server name, make it a public server, and give it a password. As you can tell, I've used a very secure password here. And make sure, of course, you have uh, at least, I guess I guess if you're doing a multiplayer game, it has to be at least two players. But um, So you go ahead and do that, create a server, um, and you'll see probably this will look different for you than it does for me. I have a bunch of mods installed. Um, you could just click Ardent Reapers right here if you see it, um, but if you don't see it there, you can click work, Workshop and kind of scroll through these various pages of whatever mods you have installed uh, and uh, just find Ardent Reapers and uh, go ahead and select that. So that should briefly um, get you loaded in here um, and you'll see you essentially just have a table. Um, you can look over here. There are a couple different uh, colors. You can obviously choose either white or green as the players. Uh, there's also a gray spectator, uh, which just uh, the spectators can just watch the game. They can't actually see any information or really interact with anything on the board. Uh, there's also a game master, which is kind of cool. Game master can see all the hands and whatnot. Um, so if, you know, maybe making some content or whatever, you can, you can go with that mode and do some commentary on something like that. Um, anyways, we'll go back to being the white player here. Uh, you will, of course, notice that there is the deck generator over here. So there's two ways you can generate decks. Uh, you can either generate a random deck uh, by selecting random deck. Uh, so you can see that's been generated down here. Wilted Propagator. And we'll go ahead and set that aside for now. And the other option, of course, is to build a deck of your choosing. Now, to do this, um, you'll want to go to the Ardent Reapers website. Um, and you don't actually have to have a deck that you own. You could just go to the decks page and just grab whichever one you want. Um, you know, probably make sure your opponent's cool with that before just grabbing the, the most powerful deck you can find or something. But uh, otherwise, you can go to my decks. Uh, we'll go ahead and grab Woeful Patriarch. Uh, and the only thing you need is the, uh, the URL at the top of your uh, browser there. So you'll just copy that and then paste that uh, into that area here and hit build deck. And then from there, you can see we've got our deck down here. Um, and if you haven't used Tabletop Simulator at all before, uh, you just do, use WASD to move around. If you right click in your mouse and move the mouse, you can kind of change directions. If you've got a scroll wheel uh, or like the two finger scrolling on like a trackpad or something, that's how you go in and out. Uh, also that right click, uh, you can go up and down and stuff like that. So, um, that's just kind of the basics. Um, you know, you can click and you can drag to select multiple items and stuff like that. Um, in terms of things that are going to be a little bit more useful, specific to Ardent Reapers, um, let's start with probably one of the weird, tricky ones. Um, you could, of course, just flip this over and grab the uh, card list off the uh, bottom of the deck. Um, but useful for this and also useful for Deep Carl, which plays the bottom card of your deck. Uh, if you hold alt and then right click so you have to be holding the deck also hold alt and then you right click and that actually drops the bottom card of your deck um so again uh, useful for for grabbing your card list off um but also handy because uh, there are cards that interact with the bottom of your deck um so uh, aside from that uh, kind of a very basic thing in order to shuffle a pile of cards 
uh, you hold or uh, press R rather. Uh, so I don't know, R reload, reshuffle, roll. I'm not sure entirely what it stands for, but it, if you hit R, it reshuffles uh, or it shuffles. Um, and then in terms of uh, drawing cards, you know, if you just want to do grab one card off the top, you just kind of click and click and pull really quick. If you want to grab the whole stack, you click wait a second and then it then it picks up right there. Um, now, uh, if you know, if we're going to set up here, you have to pull cards out and then press F to flip them. So that's not a creature. That's not a creature. We have no creatures in this deck. That's right. I've forgotten about that. So, you know, you can uh, you can go about that. The, the important thing here is that F is how you flip cards. Um, and here's actually kind of a, another fun little trick. We've got all these cards that are right next to each other. I think you can grab these and like shake them to put them together or something like that. But the other tr trick is you can grab all these cards and hit G and it groups them all together, which is handy. So putting those over there in your discard pile can be useful. Um, drawing cards off of a deck, uh, you can hit a number to draw that many cards. So, you know, again, at the beginning of a Ardent Reapers game, you would press three um, and then it will pull them into your hand. Uh, in terms of looking at cards, uh, you can hold alt while you hover over a card. And if that's too big for you, you can actually kind of scroll in or scroll out to, to make the card bigger. Um, so you just do that to your to your liking. If you want to look at the bottom of or the back of a, a card, uh, you can hold Alt and Shift while hovering over it, which that might be useful if you had something, I don't know, upside down somewhere um, or you needed to see the bottom card of your deck. I don't know what situation that would be in, but it's just kind of a, a useful thing. Um, where to go from there? Oh, yeah. So in Ardent Reapers, you score cards and you interact with them, moving them left and right. Um, in order to uh, rotate a card, uh, you press Q and E, Q to you know rotate left, uh, E to rotate right. I think by default, uh, this is set to 30, which is just not super great. It takes a lot of pressing to rotate. <laughs> Uh, uh to rotate 90 degrees so what i definitely recommend is going up here and changing your rotation degrees uh, if you just keep clicking it and getting it to 90 that that way you only have to press q or e once uh, to move it 90 degrees in that direction um so over the course of the game uh, you'll be scoring cards uh, people do this differently uh, you know some people like to fan them out um, when i'm playing on tabletop simulator i honestly just like putting them in a stack a couple reasons for that uh, one is you or your the other player can also um, just right click on the stack and hit search. Uh, and if you do that alt trick, you can zoom in on these cards and you can look at all of them. Uh, so it's like it's still accessible for both players to look at. Um, and it takes up a little bit less space, but obviously to to each their own, however you want to do that. Um, one thing that is handy is at the end of the game, you're going to want to put all these out so they're easy to look at. Um, so if you just select the whole stack and then right click and hit spread, it does this really nice splay. Uh, and so now you can see all of their victory points. You know, if you prefer, you can just, uh, you can keep them like this as well. Uh, so yeah, again, that was right click, uh, and a spread that does that. Um, let's see anything else, anything else more we want to talk about. Um, oh yeah. Uh, some, I guess just convenience stuff. Um, if you need to indicate something, you can you can uh, hit hit tab just once very briefly, and that will put a little bouncing arrow and it will do a little audio not notification uh, to anyone in the lobby. So that's useful in case you're just like, uh, you know, I'm attacking uh, this creature or whatever. Um, just so that's a bit more clear, uh, that can be pretty handy. Um, and yeah, uh, I think that's I think that's honestly it for right now. Um, I'm sure I could probably think of some more stuff. And if you can think of something in the, in the comments, certainly do, uh, do let me know. Oh, I got one more, one more, la one more last one for you. This one is totally, totally preference, absolutely preference. Um, but if you press a P it rotates between the various, um, uh, camera modes. And if you press a C, uh, press P a second time, it actually moves to this top down camera, which I've actually been quite enjoying um for specifically for ardent reapers um, having played a lot of keyforge on tabletop simulator um it's just a, it's just like kind of i don't know it's just it's just a little bit more familiar i guess um 
and I don't particularly enjoy the kind of 3D physics aspects of, of Tabletop Simulator. Not that there's anything wrong with them. It's just not my preference. Um, uh, one other thing, uh, I know I said last thing, but I did just think about this. Uh, you can select multiple cards, uh, which is also very handy, a very convenient thing uh, when you rotate cards. So in this case, we've got two creatures that are dormant and one that are one that's active. Um, so basically, we could select all of them like that and then just hit E once and it rotates everything clockwise obviously you know at this point this is now um this is not mature so we wouldn't want to do that again next turn um, but you can just select a different thing i think you can also you can select two and then yeah if you do a uh, hold control while you have some selected you can select various different ones and you can rotate just those cards anyways uh, I hope that this has been at least a little bit helpful. I know it's not like super polished or anything like that, but I did just want to put out a sort of quick, quick video uh, with some, uh, some help in terms of getting the mod installed and loaded into a game, um, and you know just some of the small tips and tricks, uh, some convenient stuff to make your uh, your gameplay make make the tabletop simulator experience less of a burden, uh, so you can you know enjoy sp spend more time enjoying the actual game instead of fiddling with the interface. Anyways, uh, thank you so much for watching, and I will catch you all next time.